I'm Archie Jacobs with Manufacturing Automation. I'm going to give a quick tutorial on using a Velocio PLC along with the Advanced HMI software. Now the Velocio PLC is a fairly unique PLC and it's one of the smallest I've ever seen and it's very easy to get started with. This particular one I have is the ACE 1450 model. Now for this tutorial I'm going to simply be using the PLC itself a simulator of switches for the inputs and a USB cable to connect it to my PC which also provides the communication link and the power to the PLC. So let me get started with the software. Okay, I'm going to start with writing a simple PLC programming, mapping Modbus registers, and downloading the program to the PLC. So to program the PLC, you will need the vBuilder software, and you can download that software for free from the Velocio website. If you go to the Velocio.net website, and then go to Software and vBuilder, it will take you to this page where you can download the software. You see, click to download vBuilder. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to spend time letting it download. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file I downloaded, double click to start that and accept the license. And I'm going to quickly go through accepting all these default values and say yes, let it install. And that's it, it's completed. So now if I minimize everything, I can um, see I've got a shortcut icon on my desktop. So let me start that up. And once that starts up, I will have my software. Now, um, to save yourself some frustration, before you plug in your PLC, make sure you install the software first. Um, otherwise, your drivers may not get installed correctly. So now that this is up, I know that I can plug in my PLC. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB cable to my PLC. And now if this is your first time, you'll probably see some pop-ups about installing drivers, which you just need to go ahead and say yes to install. Um, since I've already had mine plugged in, it did not pop them up again for me. So now what I want to do is I want to start a new project. I'm going to come here and click the new project icon. And I'm going to program in Ladder because I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with Ladder. Click OK. So now um, before I get started and go any further, what I want to do is I want to check and see. When I plugged in a PLC, it mapped to a COM port. I need to know what that COM port was. So to find that, I go to the Device Manager. In Windows 10, you can right-click your Start button, go to Device Manager, and expand down Ports, and you'll see right here Velocio Com um, is Com3, and that's the uh, value I need that's important. So now back in my software, I'm going to come here to Help, Com Tool, and I see I, I have my Com3 already here. Now some computers, you may have multiple options. So I'm going to select COM3, go ahead and connect, and you see it connected. Um, so now back in my software, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Start Here button, and I'm going to do an auto setup for all the hardware. Quickly go through and basically let it find which hardware I have and create the tags for the inputs and outputs. So now that's done, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, add a normally open contact to my ladder and I'm going to link this to uh, one of my physical inputs. So I go to my input bit, select first input and click OK to that. Now what I want to do is put a coil and link this to an output. I'm going to come here to output bit, select and click OK. So now you see my input will directly turn on the output. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to make a free running timer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to Timer Clock, uh, drop this in. Now go to my Tag Editor. I see by default it puts me as Integer 32. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 32-bit integer and I'm going to put in the name Timer 1 and click OK to that. Now that's uh, my timer. And now what I want to do is after three seconds I want this timer to reset and start again. So I'm going to add another Timer Clock and this time I'm just going to type in my timer1 tag now that it already exists. Now this block I want it to reset so let me change that to reset click OK. So now what I want it to do is reset when it's above three seconds so I'm going to come here to a greater than or equal to put that on my rung where I've got my reset block I'm going to look at timer1 and I'm going to say when it's greater than or equal to 3000 which is three seconds. So now uh, what I want to do is I'm going to uh, 
program my PLC to actually see if this works. I'm going to go up here to the V button, the program button, and it happens really fast, but it downloaded it. I'm going to click the play, and then I'm going to come over here and click my debug button so I can actually see my values. Now, if I take my PLC and um, switch my number one on, switch number one on, you'll see it goes green and my see my output light come on. Turn it off, it goes off. So I know my program PLC, um, my PLC program correctly. So now what I want to do is I want to map my Modbus registers. Okay, first thing I do is I got to turn off debug mode. Come back to Modbus and I'm going to map some of my tags to Modbus registers so that advanced HMI can access them through the Modbus driver. So the first thing I'm going to uh, select is my input bit and then I'm going to go to output bit and you see right here it's address 1 and 2 for the input for the output. Now for the timer, I'm going to come over here to integers and floating point, select that, come down to integer 32, select my timer, and that gives me Modbus start address 1 and end address 2. Because it is a 32-bit, Modbus registers only 16-bit, it needs two registers. So let me click OK to that, Now let me once again click the V to download it, and put it in run mode. And that's it. Now my PLC is now ready to go. And my next step, I will show how to use advanced HMI to view these registers. Up to this point, I created a simple PLC program, mapped the tags to some Modbus registers, and downloaded it to the PLC. So now what I want to do is I want to create a simple advanced HMI project to display those values. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to exit the V Builder in order to guarantee that it frees up the COM port. Since we're using a COM port, we can only access it through one program at a time. So by closing V Builder, it guarantees that Advanced HMI can still access that port. So I downloaded Advanced HMI and extracted it, and I'm going to go ahead and open the project in Visual Studio. And as it opens up, the, the very first thing we want to do is perform a build. Let's do a build, build solution. That basically creates all the controls. So now, once it's built, I want to come into my Solution Explorer and double click Main Form. And now you see in my toolbox, I have all of my uh, components and drivers. Now, since we're using Modbus over Serial, that's going to be the Modbus RTU driver. So I'm going to come here to the toolbox, click on Modbus, and add one to my form. Now, the first thing I want to do is over on the port, the port name, remember we looked it up in Device Manager and discovered it was COM3. So it's important here to put COM3. Now, being it's a USB uh, mimicked COM port, the, all the other settings really aren't critical, uh, so we don't have to worry about the baud rate and so forth. Um, but one other thing I do want to change in this driver is the pull rate overrides at 500. That means every 500 milliseconds it's going to update. I like to really stress drivers and push things to the limit, so I'm going to change this down to a zero. A zero basically means let's read this as fast as we can and see how quick we can get uh, data from this controller. So now back on my main form, let me get rid of the, um, the licensing thing to make space here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, a basic label and put a basic label on the form. And let me come to the font and make this a little bit larger so it's easier to see. Okay, let's go to about 24 and bold. So now what I want to do is I'm going to use this basic label to show my timer. Remember I, I put in a timer and I mapped it to Modbus address 1. So in, in the Modicon world, that address is going to be a 4000 series because it's an integer. Now if we remember, it's a double integer. It's a 32-bit. Now your basic addresses in Modbus are 16-bit, so in order to tell Advanced HMI we want to read a 32-bit, we're going to prefix this with an L. We're going to say this is a long integer, 32-bit. So we're going to do L4001. The 4 means it's the integer space, and the 1 is the first register. 
So now I'm going to just uh, run this program and see if I have everything correct up to this point. And you see, we're now reading that timer preset. And you see it goes up to the three seconds, the 3000 milliseconds and resets. So our communication is good. So now the, the other addresses, um, I'm going to use just a, um, a basic indicator. Now I'm gonna put in my, my basic indicator. I remember the switch was on address one. So I'm going to use uh, PLC address select color. I want to change it to the second color with that address. So I'm, I'm going to use a one series address. Now this actually works with zero or one series. Um, I'm going to start it with a one. So I'm going to say one uh, zero 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 one because it's my first address. This is my input. And let me come down here to my text and let me just make a note and say um, input one so we know what that is. Now I'm going to copy and paste another indicator. I'm going to change that name to the output. Now the output we remember uh, map to address two. So I'm going to change this from a one to a two. So now let me run my application. And you see we've got my timer. Now if I take my PLC, I flip my switch number one and you see input one comes true and as I'm looking at my PLC I see my output light comes on and you see the basic indicator output one also comes on. Now it's extremely fast because I have the pole rate override down to zero so you see it they look like they're happening simultaneously which they kind of are because the PLC is uh, also refreshing and very fast. Now. Let me go back and change the pole rate override just so we can kind of see. I'm going to make it 1000. That means there's a one second delay in updating. So now you'll see my, my update. You'll be able to tell from my label how slow it's happening. So now if I switch, say I switch on, there's a little bit of delay. They come on, switch off. So it can basically be up to a one second delay. So you see the difference there with that pole rate override. So if I go back to pull rate override of, of zero, it's pushing this uh, communication link as fast as it possibly can, which is very fast. You can almost see that it's almost within the, the milliseconds that it's updating. So that's basically it. We now, we created the PLC program, put it in the Velocio PLC. Um, well, we also mapped some Modbus addresses. And then we come in advanced HMI using the Modbus RTU driver told it which COM port to find the, the PLC at and use the addresses that we mapped. And here we go. We have an HMI communicating to the Velocio PLC. And that's it.